All right, everyone, Cowboy Trades here. Welcome back to the channel. I just wanted to give you a quick update on the S&P 500, bond markets, dollar, liquidity conditions for you know the stock and equity markets. So uh, just very quickly, if we're starting off on the four hour time frame for the S&P 500, you can see that we're putting in a diamond bottom formation at this moment in time. Now, uh, this is just the name of the pattern. I do not believe we have the liquidity conditions required to have a successful breakout of this diamond bottom formation. So this is just the name of the pattern. This diamond can break either way. And in my opinion, I do think we're getting ready to break to the downside. Why is this? Well, let's come over to the CME liquidity tool. And if we are coming over to the book depth for the contracts in the e-mini futures for the S&P 500, basically looking at how liquid is the S&P 500 right now? How much money is in this market? Uh, the other day, when we do come over to the daily time frame, you can see we pushed all the way back up to this to the top of this diamond bottom formation. And with this liquidity conditions, contract sizes started to rush to the upside. It's like we never learned. As you can see, uh, if we're looking at the quantity of asks and bids, they're extremely elevated, as mu almost as much as they were on the 21st of December. So if we are coming to uh, like a year to date picture, uh, a little bit more than a year from here, uh, this is the chart that we normally look at. You can see once again, we absolutely never learn. Stock market traders never learn, crypto traders never learn. Uh, the contract sizes started rushing back up to the upside which means that the mid price is starting to push back up to the upside. And this normally happens, I mean, you can see after this great rug pull in terms of liquidity, we're looking at this blue line here, which is the mid price. You can see after this huge rush to the downside, we did have a buyback in terms of liquidity. And then you can see we broke down, had another buyback in terms of liquidity. Then we had another peak. We broke down, saw another buyback in terms of liquidity before breaking down. As you can see over here, we had a huge, huge overextension in terms of liquidity. We broke down and had a big buyback in terms of volume. And over, over here, you can see, once again, we topped out round about this range. This was like a double top in liquidity. We broke down. And as we literally just looked at a second ago, if we are kind of coming over to, you know, what's been happening in the past month or so, uh, we are once again pushing up in terms of the liquidity in the market. So if you're new to the channel, this is how overextensions and liquidity affect the market. So when we were looking at the higher time frame right here, uh, you will notice a peak in the mid price here, a peak in the mid price here, a peak in the mid price here, and a peak in the mid price here. This is what these blue lines refer to over on my S&P 500 chart. So you can see how liquidity conditions and over extensions in liquidity affect the market. And if we do come over to the daily, uh, we just talked about, you know, how the buybacks in terms of the CME liquidity looks like. So you can see, you know, we broke down, had a buyback before that next major rush to the downside. We broke down, had a buyback before that next major rush to the downside. We broke down, had a buyback back before that next major rush to the downside and over here this was actually where the top in uh in the price action was although liquidity topped out at this moment in time this is how you know that this move was a absolutely uh you know li liquidity grab and was not going to last because liquidity conditions were already topped out over here so we've already started to break down and with this, you know, we've kind of had a small, small bounce while we've been establishing this uh, this next zone while the S&P 500 is really deciding uh, what it wants to do at this moment in time. So where do I see the S&P 500 heading? Well, in the immediate short term, it's already heading down uh, very, very strongly. I think in the next day or so, we're probably going to drop about another 1%, 0.75%, down to about 3,810. This will definitely drag your Bitcoins down, uh, your altcoins, you know, the other markets in general. Uh, this is the e-mini futures. So let me come over to the S&P 500 because we have quite recently talked about price gaps and these price gaps won't reveal themselves if we're looking at the e-mini futures. So these are the price gaps that I've got my eyes on. You know, I, I mentioned this price gap over here. I believe we were trading around about 4,100 when I told you I believe we were going to fill this price gap down at 3,780. Of course, we have now filled this price gap. So I can remove this. I don't think we have the liquidity to push up to here, so I'm not even going to keep an eye on this price gap. Uh, no price gaps here. This price gap was filled. I'm just checking. I haven't missed anything. This price gap was filled. So the next price gap I've got in mind is this one down here, uh, 3,638 down to uh, 3,606. Of course, the bottom of this range is really the target that you want to keep your eyes on because we can come down into this zone and bounce and it's not, you know, it's not over until we actually push beneath the bottom here because we need to fill this price gap to the downside. So 
from where we're sitting at for the S&P 500 at this moment in time, I do believe that we're going to break down about another 5.7%. Now, the markets are looking pretty, pretty dire on the yearly time frame. Let's quickly head over because I posted a, I posted a tweet. And as you can see, the year-to-date returns for the S&P 500. This is the last trading session of 2022, by the way. Uh, for Bitcoin, of course, we've still got tomorrow. But of course, the S&P 500, uh, your equity markets, they're not going to be open tomorrow. So this is the last trading session of 2022. And so far... The S&P 500 is down 19%. The Nasdaq's down 33%. Bitcoin is down 65%. Bear in mind, this is year-to-date returns from the start of the year to the end of the year, not the top to the bottom, not the top from where we are right now. Year-to-date returns, January 1st to January 1st. Total cryptocurrency market cap is down 66.5%. Total altcoin market cap is down 68%. Now, because of this, I think altcoins have much, much further to go down in comparison to Bitcoin. I do believe that final capitulation will really, really start melting through the floorboards. US interest rates went up by 17, oh, sorry, they went up by 1,700%, which is a 17x from 0.25 up to 4.25. It's either at 4.25 or 4.5. Uh, you can go check that yourself if you want. Uh, the two-year bonds for uh, the, the U.S. government bonds for the two years are up 496%. U.S. government bonds 10 years uh, are up 154%. And the DXY is up 8.5%. So year to date, this market has been an absolute storm. If we are coming over to the TIP ETF very quickly, I'm going to fly through some of these charts. Uh, the TIP ETF has broken back down into the bear flag, just like we did predict. And of course, we look at the TIP ETF because if the Treasury inflationary protected securities start breaking down into new lows, it's of course going to bring the S&P 500 down. This is how we were able to call for new lows in the markets uh, back in August. And of course, you know, this bled into Bitcoin, this bled into the S&P 500. And it took about, you know, a month or so, two months, actually, it took two months for this to finally like start breaking down into fruition. But you can see once the tip broke down from this bear flag, we had a failed move, it was a fast move in the opposite direction, broke through the floorboards of this. This is exactly what's happening right now. I do believe coming into the start of 2023 you're going to start seeing treasury inflationary protected securities start breaking through the floorboards and this will of course mean uh, that everything else is going to break down this is going to mean the strength of the dxy will increase the strength of government bonds will increase the s p 500 will break to the downside so this is pretty much all i wanted to talk about for this video i will also show you the government bonds just very very quickly um I made an extensive YouTube video about government bonds the other day, so I really just want to show you the most important ones being the 10 and the 2 years for the US. Uh, the 10 year is on a rampage to the upside right now, beautifully breaking out of this bull flag. Now, while I don't think it's smart to take uh, and extrapolate this uh, bull flag price target, because I do not believe that, you know, the 10 year government bonds are going to basically double, uh, it would be saying that we're going to move up to about 6% uh, or, yeah, uh, or 6, $6, 6, uh, yeah, 6%. But I do not believe that we're going to push up this high. Uh, it's kind of hard to, you know, say how far the government bonds are going to push to the upside. But I would be saying, you know, keep an eye around about the 1.236. I do believe a rate of about 4.5% would be very, very healthy uh, for the 10-year before we do finally start, top it, start to top out. So a 17% increase for the 10-year is definitely well under fruition, in my opinion. And you can finally start to see that the 2-year has been breaking up to the upside at this moment in time. So up to the 1.236. I do believe this could push up about another 14.5%. And of course, this will increase the profitability of the DXY. The VIX is also pushing up to the upside. It looks like we're trying to hold this. And, you know, if we are looking at how the VIX is telling us that the market should be performing, the VIX is saying that we're about to get ready for a massive run to the upside. Once again, if you're new to the channel, the VIX is the volatility index for the S&P 500. And you can see this is inversely correlated to the S&P 500. So if the VIX is going to take a huge rush up in terms of volatility, the the S&P 500 will take a huge rush to the downside. That is really all I wanted to talk about for this video. Just a quick update on my price targets, letting you know what I think is going to happen. I do plan on making a extensive video talking about maybe five or 10 predictions for the markets in 2023. I want to talk about my bond market predictions, DXY predictions, Bitcoin predictions, where I think the S&P 500 is going, where I think the NASDAQ is going, uh, where I think inflation is going to top out, where I think the interest rates are going to go. Uh, so, you know, all in all, let me know how you think about that down below. I've got, um, I, I want to lay out a video 
quite extensively talking about my predictions for 2023. So uh, as always, it's been your boy Cowboy Trace. All I've got for you for this video. If you do want more content for me while I am while I am away from the markets, if you do want news events, you know, memes other data that I do post uh, that doesn't make it over to my YouTube, be sure to head over to my Twitter at 618 underscore cowboy. As always, it's been your boy Cowboy Trades. I'm out. Peace.